conversation. We were still arguing with one another. The woman told me, but you said you wanted to be treated like a human being. And I said, well, I didn't mean that. I want to be treated like what I am. I'm not a human being anyway, so don't treat me like them. The next thing, about two hours later, I was on Pan Am going to Europe. So you see, something is watching everything you say, even down to a tiny detail where I said, treat me like a human being. So see, I've learned from personal experience that whatever you say you are, that's what you get. Now, if you say you're a man, now what's the difference between a man and a human being? You see, you have to watch that. Somebody added this hue on there. Do you know what hue means? No, you don't. You don't know what it means. Now, you have to go all the way back to ancient Egypt and see, they had a god called Hugh. I'm not even going to tell you. You look, up, you look it up and bring it back to class like next Monday. Tell me what the Egyptian meant by Hugh. Now, you, so, of course, you can go into phonetics and you can say Hugh, which means color. And they be talking about a colored man. That would be a huge man. But see, now, Hugh can be spelled like this. That means to cut something down. You got Huge, cut down. So see, watch that. It's bad for you, because what's bad for me. And I know what's bad for me is bad for you. Now, man again. See, I expressed that in England. I wrote, said, well, I'm a different order of being. I'm not man. Now, the point of it is what does man mean? According to the good book, it says, man is filthy and abominable. Well, I suppose that's where you spell abominable. No, yeah. Anyway, it might be an A over there. But man is filthy and abominable. Now, who wants to be that? But you go out in the street, you hear him tell talking filthy language, and you keep on, you see them. They be abominable and filthy. And you even talk about the abominable, abominable snowman, you see? You got that. But this book said man is abominable. So it's, it's out, all out there uh, on you everywhere. What else is it said about man? Man is like the beast. that perishes. Now you got these equations on you. So now, in another place it's saying, man is made in the image of God. What does that make God? The beast, of course. So now you go and you write a book and say you made an image of God and got in the same book, man is like the beast that perishes, that makes God a beast. You know, if I was God, I wouldn't like that. You would have insulted me to call me a beast. Now, here you got a case where they say Christ, they, they're worshiping Christ as God. Now, you can get a book called Oaspi. And it's got in there, uh, the beast said, think not that I came to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. And he told my Christ, that's who said it. And who's Christ? He's supposed to be the son of God. And there you are. Now, your equations have messed you up. You can't say you man. If you do, you're filthy and abominable. And you can't say you man, because if you do, you like the beast that perishes. Now, some folks say the white man is the beast. And you see, more and more black folks want to be like him. And every time they jump up there and want to be like him, he kills them. See? Man, it's like the beast that perished. So it's an equation. It's working. Now, I don't think the white people are doing things to black folks on their own. They're supervised. Now, you take over in James Baldwin, the book called The Fire Next Time, he tells you that. He said that behind them is one who's nameless and infinitely hard, harder to please. He said, behind the white race is one who's named. There's something else he said about it, too, about a lot of power. Now, no black people went to James Baldwin and asked, because he, he's in Paris now, what do you mean by that? 
So you see, black people don't ask questions. Here's a man telling them uh, behind the white race is someone who's uh, nameless, full of power, and bottomlessly hard to please, don't care what you do for him, he ain't pleased with you. And no black person will go to James Baldwin and say, well, who do you mean? They haven't done that. So here you got a race that even if, you, if somebody comes in and tells them the truth, they still don't investigate it. They just go right on talking about freedom, and they go right on talking about peace, and they go right on going to jail, and they go right on dying. Now you see, not even the, the animals in the forest would do anything like that. If they saw the rest of their friends going down like they're on a pathway, and all of them get cut off like that, even ants, you keep on doing like that. And find the other ants gonna go the other way. Now how come black people can't do that? You see? Even the ants will do that. Everything follows the first law of nature, but black folks, they refuse to follow the first law of nature, which is self-preservation. So they keep on running and say, well, he didn't make it. I know I'm gonna make it. And he said, chop, 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 chop. See? So now, speaking of equality, the white race, they got a certain way they have to go, certain things they have to do. They're on a different vibration. I don't care what they tell you about integration, they like you. You, you let one of them, a white woman sit out in the sun in Philadelphia and got burned to death. <laughs> so, and she liked the sun. You take, white people like the sun in New York, even in the winter when the sun comes, they run out and sit in the park. They like the sun. But you see, the part about it, like, uh, son don't like them. <laughs> Keeps on burning them. And they sit out there and they get burned. Now you see, now there's something wrong between white people and the sun. They cannot get over to any state of equality with black folks as long as they can sit out in the sun and don't get burned. Because the sun is a life giver. It's making a difference between black folks and white folks. Of course, I saw a black woman in a drugstore getting us some suntan in New York. So she wanted to sit out in the sun so she could get tanned. And she was already black. <laughs> but I don't think she knew it because uh, a lot of black people don't know they're black. They'd rather be anything but what they are. And they know that these other nations are going to be, like I read about a black woman, she, she married an African man, and she went to Africa, and she told the truth. She'd been in Africa almost four years, and she said she's still not an African. The, Africans, the African women be helping her, trying to teach her that ways and everything, and she almost ready to give up. She'd do everything, what they tell her. They still haven't recognized her as an African woman yet. They still say she's Western-minded. Now, that's very difficult then for a black woman to go over there and be black. So the whole thing is, uh, the reason I'm saying it's so difficult, I'd rather for black folks to go to Jupiter, Mars, and Venus. It's easier than you going to Africa and trying to be an African because they got a thing too where they got, like an African told me that black folks come over there and uh, they be making fun of their culture. They go over there, some of those tribes are very simple. And they get out, and they be doing their native dances, and they got their music. There's nothing sophisticated about it. Here come a black man over there, and a black woman that's been over in a sophisticated society, and it's rubbed off on them, uh, whitewashed them. They go over there and see these natives doing these natural things, and they, they are prone to stand back and laugh. Now, that, I've talked to some Africans, and they told me that. An African from Nigeria told me, well, black people from here are all right. But he said they come over there and they make fun of their culture. They make fun of them. And he said, we can't stand that. We sent, sent them back. He said, we sent a lot of black people back to came to Nigeria, except one black man. So this black man, he said, my father owns a plantation. I was born in Nigeria. He said, this black man came over there, and one week he knew more about that plantation than anybody in, in the district. And so he showed us all kind of things about our own land, about herbs and that. He said, now that kind of black man, he's welcome to teach us. He didn't even say he's welcome to stay. Now, 
Uh, I got something else. Now, this is a book called The Brotherhood of Angels and Men. You need this book, too. It's written by, because, see, you didn't even know there was any brotherhood between men and angels. It's by The Brotherhood of Angels and Men. Jeffrey Hodson, published, of course, in London. You see, England has a lot of things. That's when England was ruling uh, the sun never set on the British Empire. They got all the books. And, and I went to London looking for some of the books. I couldn't buy any. They always said they didn't have any. But uh, the point of it is that I suppose they send them out so they can make some money. So now you get that book, The Brotherhood of Angels and Men, and then we can talk together. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to talk to you because if I tell you something, you don't, know, you don't know the different symbols and things. You might not catch it. Now this part here, uh, the Jews and Egyptians, since both were the same by color as a race, they had them all in slavery and to efface them from the pages of history so that their crime would never be traced, they lumped them together and put an epithet upon them by calling them Negroes. Now this book ought to be in the hands of every black person in America. And not only that, it ought to be in the hands of every white person. Because it's the truth. It says that what is called Negroes are Jews and Egyptians. Now notice, that the Jews were the ones supposed to have killed Christ. But they weren't white Jews. They wouldn't do nothing like that. Besides that, nature shows you that the black man has done something somewhere back there. You see, like he can come up and be telling the truth, get wasted. Now somewhere back there he's done this. Just the one somebody that come up talking something different. He had all this stuff together. He had his government. I mean, the black governments were the most powerful governments ever been on this planet. And of course, they knew everything. They demonstrated everything. Here come one black man along talking something else. One tiny little man, very small. One man in the black race said something else. Then all the black people jumped on and said, no. Now, there was a time I didn't believe that. I didn't believe anybody could be cruel to somebody who really didn't mean them any harm, and who could heal people, and who could do all manner of things, raise them from the dead. I said, no, folks wouldn't do that. So then I decided I'd go out and tell black folks the truth, things they didn't know. And they neglected me, and they neglected me, and they still doing it. So then I can say about that, even though I've been telling them the truth for years, and they've neglected me, they're used to it. Now see, they got to rectify that. They got to take one somebody, regardless of whether they believe it or not, and be open-minded enough to say, he's black too, and he has just as much right to his opinion as me. Now, the day the black man do that, that's the day he's really going to be free of uh, all these things that he's imposing upon himself. Because nobody, he's too powerful for anybody to do anything to him except himself. You see, a man that's very powerful can be self-destructive. And the more powerful he is, the more self-destructive he is, and the more destruction strikes him. Now, you see, the black man is very powerful. He's not weak. Because he's so powerful, and all his strength is turned over inside, see? It's like a fire that strikes out and destroys him. Now, if he was weak, it wouldn't make any difference. But he's been in slavery and everything. He's still strong. It isn't anything anybody can do about it because he's a product of nature. And all products of nature are strong. Now the black man is very strong, but he got to do one thing. He's got to recognize those in his race who might not be so strong. The stronger a man is, the more he should help a weaker brother. Because what else can he do with his strength? He got so much strength, he can't use it all for himself. He has a weaker brother that doesn't have too much strength, but he might have intelligence. He might have all kinds of solutions to problems. So he should say, well, that's my brother too. 
he should help him. The white race is doing that. Now they go out and they see children that might not even have a chance in the world, like epileptics. They even go out and help some black children, put them in their hospital. They always go out and get somebody crippled, get somebody blind, help them. Now black people, don't, they don't even have anything where they can go out and do that. It's very serious. I'll tell you what happened in Chicago once. Uh, a black man was sitting down on the ground and uh, he had his crutches with him. He was laying down there with him too. A black woman came by and there was a lot of people standing. She said, well, people, are we gonna let one of our people sit down here on the sidewalk? Hear this man sitting down on the sidewalk. You passing by him like he doesn't even exist. We are black. We're not supposed to let a black man sit down here and be like this. This man needs help. This man needs our love. And the people stopped and they came around and looked. And finally this man stood without his courage and said, folks, take this woman away from me. Get her away from around me. Now, so then I, I was most amazed. I said, here, black folks have, got, have gotten so they can't even appreciate love. Now, when I, a dog can appreciate that. Black folks have even got so they don't even appreciate a friend. I saw that with my own eyes. Now, many things have been said about the black race, about their good attributes, but I think that's a disgrace that this black man stood up and said that, and he needed help. And all this black woman was offering him was love and friendship, and he refused it. Now, if it had been an enemy come along, kicked him and run away from there, he'd have recognized that. But he couldn't recognize love and friendship. Now, so then it comes to a place that black people have been very well indoctrinated with love your enemy. So that's what he was doing. He would have loved the enemy, but he couldn't love a friend. Now, see, black people have got to change completely. You got to turn and lose everything you got and get to be your natural self. Now, the instant you become your natural self, you're going to be all right. Because it isn't anything better than your natural self. It really isn't anything more beautiful than a black person who's a natural. Now, he can be the baddest man or the baddest woman you ever see. But they come up and be natural, is nothing more beautiful. I know that. And there's nothing more sincere and nothing more pure in heart than a natural black man and a natural black woman. A natural black man will not harm another black man. And a natural black woman will not do that. Black people who do that are not naturals. They're based on what they're doing on artificiality. Because it is true that black is beautiful. It's not ugly the way you've been taught. Black is beautiful. Uh, it has many attributes, although people associated with death. So what? What's greater than death? It proves his majesty every day. Everything bows down to death. Now black is associated with death, they say. You see? No trouble whatsoever. If black folks could prove that uh, they're good buddies with death, nobody would touch you on the planet. Nobody. When they see you coming, they get out your way. <laughs> you said, my brother, death. Are you my father? What's the difference? And so you see, when you get some sense, you're going to be all right. But you have to have some sense that's profitable to you. As long as you indulge in things that's unprofitable to you, you don't have any sense. So when I look at the black race today, and I see that they don't really have any big businesses like the white race. They don't have any international things going. They be talking about pennies and dollars and thousands and millions. I'm talking about the treasures of the universe because I wouldn't go out there trying to make money. Now I'd go out there and take a gamble on some wealth because uh, wealth is worth it. But people who tell you that being wealth is bad, don't believe that line. Because Every, all the businesses are put up by men who are rich and wealthy. If you didn't have some wealthy people, you wouldn't be able to get any money. You wouldn't be sitting in this uh, university. You wouldn't be able to do anything without some wealth because it's gotten so where men respect wealth. They respect wealth more than they do money because money, if you get some money, you don't know what happens to it. They take it all away from you anyway and tax and other things. But if you get some wealth, then nations will bargain with you. 
So he got some wealth. That's why Africans get a better, you know, they're respected more by white people from the point of view, they treat them better. An African come to this country now and get some money when you can't get any. I've seen it happen. They can go to a Catholic church, other church, ask for some money, get it. And why can they get it? Because they got a country that probably got some oil in it. They got a country that probably got some diamonds in it. But you don't have nothing, you don't have any natural uh, resources. You have to have some natural resources, but you're not dealing with resources. You over here dealing with the source. <laughs> Took the re off. You see, everything, that re is also one of the names of the sun. That's scratched out for you. Now, somewhere along the way, you've done something against the sun. Now, you had your symbols up in Egypt, nothing but sun symbols. And when you had your symbols in Egypt, uh, the Mexican had their symbols up, South America had their symbols up, the whole world had sun symbols up. When the Creator struck at you, then the white man came along, made the Mexicans take their sun symbols down, they made every nation on the face of it take their sun symbols down. Now, if that sun didn't mean something for you, why did they make them take it down? They made them take it down because it was what you were supposed to be over with. It wasn't that it was a pagan sign. There's nothing pagan about the sun, but uh, it was because it was your good luck. So they had to first get your symbols down in order to conquer. So what they did, went down to South America, took all the sun symbols down, called them pagan, went over in Africa, took all the sun symbols down, went everywhere. First thing they had to go with that sun. They took the sun symbols down. That's when they sit in the sun, it burns them. Because they didn't have any business taking them down. Then they're gonna put the sun symbols right back up. Then they can sit out in the sun, it won't burn them. But if they sit out there, they're gonna find out they'll be burnt black or brown. And I don't know what some of them would do if that happened. But that's all the sun gonna do, it's gonna make them Maybe like you, it had an attribute because you got something in your skin that white people don't have. That's what makes you black. Now, um, there's something else I want to speak about. Um, yeah, somewhere in Proverbs it said, the righteous are deli delivered out of trouble and the wicked come in his place. Now, Christ was supposed to have been righteous. That means he's not coming back. What you're going to get is the wicked. Now, he was supposed to have been delivered, saved. But it says, the righteous delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. So what's coming instead of Christ? Something wicked. You don't get nothing good no more. Because what you did, if you had something, this planet had something good offered to it, and they, they refused to recognize it. So the next thing the Creator going to send them is something wicked. Because that's their only hope now. That's the only thing that they haven't denied. They haven't denied wickedness, and they haven't denied evil. So then the Creator sent them something wicked, and he something sent them something evil. It's the only way he can save them, you know, because they have abolished good off the face of the earth. He can't save them. But so that's his plan. He's going to send you something evil and wicked. Now here's another place I will destroy my people since they return not from their ways. Here's another place. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Now that's over in your Bible. I find then a law. Now the white race is based on Paul. I mean that church is, he's saying this. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. So that's the law. So now here black folks want to do something good. And what does the law say? say? They can't do it unless they have something evil with them. Now every righteous black man, he got to get something evil walking along with him. Now you have a black man who's good walking with, along with a black man who's evil, they're gonna get along all right if they can agree on what they want. It isn't anything they can't get. The book says, uh, eat of the tree of good and evil. It puts it together, both of them together. They can get in my talent anything else they want. Of course, they supposedly got, well, Eve had sense enough to say, well, yeah, I uh, think I tried. So she wanted that. So she went over there with this good and evil. See? And that's what Eve's going to have to do again. 
she gonna have to say, take this dumb black man and say, look, I just heard that if we partake of this tree of such and such a thing, we're gonna be all right. And what he's gonna do? He's gonna follow Eve. You see? Because where did her name come from? Or where did Eve come from? Evil. It's got her name over in there. Now, that's what I'm saying about the black race. It's over in these things which are buried deep uh, as far as uh, wisdom is concerned. Now, you wouldn't expect for, to get free out of a trap like that. How are you going to get out of it when these words are surrounding you day and night and uh, you take like black itself, separate the word. It's got lack in it. Now, when you like something, you're done without. See? Now, you got all kind of things, like this B. That's associated with the black man. What you have to do now, you get you some books on ancient Egypt. Um, the wisdom is very much scattered, and the books are very difficult to get. But however it is written, seek and you shall find. You keep on looking. And one day you might be walking along the street and somebody walk right up to you with the very book you want. A sincere man or woman, there isn't anything they can't get. I'm speaking from experience. Like when I wanted to find out what was happening with black people, I'd be walking along the street or something, somebody bring me a book. People still bring me books that you can't buy. And I often would wonder, well, where did this book come from? From another planet? Because when I go out and try to find it, I never can find it. You see, like, here's a book here that's very difficult for you to get. You should have it because it's Egyptian grammar. Pass that out there and look at it. Now here's a whole book on Egyptian hieroglyphics, grammar, uh, bigger than the grammar books that you have in English. And that means that somebody knows all about Egyptian hieroglyphics and they're not, not black either. Now they know more about, here's this, when you see this, this is the original language of the black man. Now, they don't know nothing about hieroglyphics. They don't know nothing about anything. It's just, they're just walking around here with no vibration of their own language because language molds you into being a particular thing, vibration-wise. So when you lose your language, then uh, you lose the whole, you lose your vibration. Then you go to some African countries and you hear them speaking that language. Everybody in that nation look alike, you see. And you, you go to Scotland, and they're speaking that, that what they're broken are. They look different from the Englishmen that you see in London. And the Irishmen, all of them look different because of that particular language. Languages see of vibrations. And man is just like, uh, say you take a piece of paper and put some sand on it. Then you play some music. It begins to shape itself. Now words are vibrations. So as you speak words, according to the rhythm that you speak those, those words in, and according to the language that you speak, you will become like that. You take like Americans over here, they look different from Europeans, because Europeans be speaking different. Although they're white, they still look different. Now you go to Europe and an American white man come over there, you can tell it, because he looks different. Now the same thing about black people. They speak in a different language, they go to Africa, they look different. Because it's because of one thing, vibrations. No one can get away from vibrations. Now a black man throws out different vibrations from a white man. That's why no black person can ever really be white. And no white person can really be black. Because you can't be black unless you've got the vibrations of black. Now you can take a machine and uh, you can measure the vibrations and the projections of colors. They got some machines like that. You put it by a black man, it'll be going, throwing out certain vibrations. You put it by a white man, it'll throw out another vibration. And any man you put it by, it's gonna throw out these vibrations according to his color because your color Color itself is uh, really like music. You can hear it. Now they got some, it's a picture, I don't know what they got in university called Unheard Melodies. You should see that picture. If I can get it, I'll show it to you next Monday. They got it in New York. I don't see why they shouldn't have it here. But this picture is measuring uh, objects. I mean, uh, they have a scientific instrument that you can place by a statue. And then you can hear the music from that statue. See? And you place it by a man. You can hear the music. Now anytime they put, everybody, everything is throwing out music. This is throwing it out. This is throwing it out. Every object is throwing out music. Why? Because the wind is coming around a certain way. And as the wind comes around, it makes a certain sound. See? And only this particular object would make that sound. Therefore, a man, you see, different men are proportioned differently. And that skin is different. 
everything, their minds different as the wind strikes them. You see, it begins to, um, it throws out these vibrations. So you're going to have to come down to vibrations and frequencies. When you start doing that, you become, uh, you begin to know yourself better. And as you know yourself better, uh, of course, you have to prepare yourself. Because as you get to know yourself, then the evil in you is going to jump right up and say, don't forget me. And if you try to, it's going to say, no, you don't. I'm part of you, too. So then you're going to have to say, well, well, I have to consider you. And you're going to have to uh, channel that evil some kind of way. You have to do something with it. Because if you take the good side of you and always uh, using only that, you're going to wear that out. And you wear the good out in you, and then the evil say, all you got left is me now. You see, so every time a man do a good deed, uh, he, he minuses, you see. And see, he leaves, like, say, for instance, if evil is 60, and this is 60, and a man do a good deed, he'll have 59 good deeds left. He go do another, he might come on down, like I said, he gets a zero. And then when he get ready to do a good deed, he's going to have to go up here and say, well, you all I got left. Now I want to do something good. Please let me do something good. And then he had to go up there, and then the evil can say, well, all right, but I'm not going to lose any of my attributes when I help you. Now, I'm not going to do like evil. You ain't going to wear me out. I mean, good, you're not going to wear me out. And it even goes to say that the good that men do is often interred with their bones, and the evil remains out. That's what you got. I think Shakespeare said it. So you see, you got this evil still. So all you have to do, being evil, just turn around. See? You turn, and then you got that. But see, if you're good, and you turn, you be even look like dog or something. <laughs> now you take the word evil. Here it goes again, phonetics. Five. Everything is bad over in that. But so now, what you've got to do is, as I said, you really got to get, get yourself together and realize these phonetics. Here's something like this. Sins. One time I asked a friend of mine, I said, do you have any sins? He said, no. Black man, too. He said, I said, you have any sins? He said, no. I said, that's what I thought. And I wrote it out for him. <laughs> you see? So now, if I can use these words like that, think what the white man is doing to you. He come up to you and say, now, you must get rid of all your sins. <laughs> I got these churches set up for you where you can be holy and righteous and uh, get rid of your sins. Now, here he writing it like this. So the black man said, well, oh, yeah? Well, I know I got a lot of them, and so I get over in the church. He's not talking about that. He's talking about this, and he knows words. You can get books written by white authors, and he's got, they, they even speak some words, they don't even know what they mean. You know, they love words so much, and they just get so, they just get rambunctious with words. They get carried away with words. They get drunk off of words. And then they write the book, and their own people don't understand it. But because of the words, they say, well, yes, he's an artist at words, and they go on and give him some kind of award just for being good with words. But nobody understands the book. <laughs> now, see, when you deal in simplicity, it's a different story. Now, here's something, uh, like I told you, I found a lot that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Here's another place in the Bible said, the works of the world are evil. Now, here's somebody don't like evil. So here's some black men want some jobs, so they want work. And they're over in the church talking about righteousness. They don't get no work. Because they say the works of the world are evil. And they'll scribe over there with righteousness. So the man father said, oh yeah, what church? You notice when you go and look for a job, what church do you belong to? Now what does that have to do with a man getting a job? It's because whatever church you say you belong to, he's going by that doctrine of that church. And he said, well, yeah, well, can't use him. And they're doing that to you. So then you have to, then another thing they're doing to black people, like they're looking for some jobs. Say, we want a job, we want some work. And so he go to a place and say, well, I want a job. The man said, we don't have any jobs. 
I want some work. We don't have any work. And why do they say that? Because white people have started calling jobs this. You need better jobs. And you look in the newspaper and they say disciplines uh, available or something like that. And here you go talking about a job. You talking about you want some work. And of course these people don't have any. They got disciplines and that's what they call it. That's one of the keys. So now, since you're talking about freedom and everything, you don't get no disciplines. Because that's what they, in, like in some of the airplanes, uh, in the top jobs in New York, that's what they got in the, in the want ad, disciplines. So now you're going to have to get you some disciplines anyway in order to really get some money. I mean, these are the top paying jobs. They're not going to call it jobs anymore. They're going to call it, the white, the white race is very good at uh, changing words around. And they find something that's very bad, they're not going to say it like that. You see, like the Bible. They changed a lot of things in there because the sound is so bad. Like there's one place in there where it said, God told a man, now, these people are not doing what I told them to do, so I want you to go out and you show them what I'm going to do to them if they don't do what I tell them to do. So the prophet won't know what it was. He said, go out and take some man's manure and bake it and get in front of the folks and eat it. That's in your good book. But it didn't say that at first. The white race put that there. This is what it said at first. But when they saw the Bible, they said, oh, that's terrible. So then they went, and they put it like that. Now, no doubt some black people have seen that, but they don't know what that is. But notice it used the word man in there, too. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> so now, uh, I'd like for you to, well, any questions while you write down some questions to possibly, uh, I can give you some answers on it. I don't know. I, I put all those things about ancient Egypt out of my mind since they failed. I'm thinking about ignorant modern Egypt over here in America. But uh, the white race can tell you all about that. They got all the books. They could be very instructed, much more instructed than me, because they got all the books and they think they know. But I'm thinking about the future of black Egypt, which uh, is outside of the realm of history. History has been very unkind to black people. So actually what I'm always talking about is the myth. And nothing that has ever been is part of what I'm talking about. Because I'm saying that black folks need a mythocracy instead of a democracy. Because they're not going to make it in anything else. They're not going to make it in history. I told you, well, you got here late. But his story, his story. is not going to help black folks at all. <laughs> but that's not, you see, that's what's wrong with y'all. Now here you walk in, the last man to get in here. And you're going to ask questions, but honesty is not what I'm talking about. You're not in a place where truth can do you any good. So you're going to have to come to me <laughs> privately, and we'll talk about things that can help the black race. Truth has been abolished. So any truth you say is not permissible in here, because it's never done anybody any good. Now I'm dealing with things that can do you some good. If I come across the biggest lie in the universe, if it can help the black race, then I'm going to use it. That's fair warning to anybody, any nation on the face of the earth. I'm going to use anything I find and any weapon that I find. Now, I find that the truth is not permissible for me to use because I'm not righteous and holy. I'm evil. That's because I'm black. And I'm not ascribing to any righteousness. 
I've never been righteous. I'm never going to be righteous. So now I'm evil. I'm the incarnation of evil. I'm black. I'm following that dictionary. Now I'm dealing with equations. I can't go around and tell you I'm right or good when a dictionary is telling everybody in the world everything black is evil and wicked. So then I come and say, yes. So what? Yes, I'm wicked. Yes, I'm evil. I'm not going to be converted. I'm not going to ascribe to righteousness. I don't want to go to heaven because good folks don't never do nothing but be good and they're always failing and they're always getting killed and they're frustrating. So all I see on this planet is something evil like the white man being successful and successful and successful and successful. And I see evil killing black men every day, destroying him. Why should I be good? No, it's better for me to come up to the white race and say, yes, we evil people should sit down and at to the table and talk together. You evil, I'm evil too. Now, now them other folks that you're dealing with are good black folks. I'm not good, and you're not good. We understand one another. Now, a white man told me that in uh, England. He said, well, son, Ron, you know you have no illusions about people. You're just like me. And I had told him in my program, I'm evil, I'm wicked. And I told a Catholic priest that on the radio in New York, I'm evil. And I'm wicked. And not only am I evil and wicked, but because I'm black, every black man is evil and wicked. And I won't recognize none of them that come up talking about good. And I won't recognize none of them talking about truth because I can't use that. It's taboo with the white race. They got everything. They're not going to recognize it. Why should I? I don't need it. They don't need it either. I notice they got everything. And they don't, the creator don't impose this upon them. I mean, he's just. If he gives the white race everything they got with their lies and their evil and their wickedness, it speaks out and says, you do not have to be good for the creator of the universe to give you things. Now, black people want wealth. I'm talking about that. I can tell them how to get it. I can make the white race give you anything you want. All you have to do is be evil and wicked like me. <laughs> now I'm telling you what it's going to have to be. You're going to have to be over in another realm and the dimension of thinking because these people are not playing with you. Anything you come up, anytime you bring up a righteous man, they're going to oppose it. Do you think they're going to let you be righteous and go to heaven and leave them behind? Ain't nothing white good. Everything white is evil and wicked. I ain't never met a good white person, and I never will, because they weren't made good. They were made evil and wicked in imitation of the evil and wicked black man. You don't expect somebody else to come on the planet, the last man to get here, got to learn everything from you. You don't expect them to come along and be good, and you ain't good yourself. I ain't never met nothing black that was good. If they're not doing something bad, they think about it. <laughs> so now it comes down to a point of being honest with yourself. The truth is that you're just like that dictionary said, evil and wicked. Now all you have to do, since you're up under some evil and wicked people, you just do like Job. That's what he had to do. He had to tell them, well, I, I spoke a little too hastily. I'm not right. You read your Bible. Job said he was righteous too. And what happened? Satan came, threw some fire on him, <laughs> took all his wealth away from him, killed his, his sons and his daughters, killed all his cattle and his sheep, took everything away from him, and then put some souls on him, and had the man sitting down in the ashes, and here come his friends trying to talk to him, and they told him, well, well don't speak yourself right and say that you're right. Admit you're wrong, and Job wouldn't do it. Then Satan pulled some more fire on him. You read your Bible, finally Job, he said that, he spoke a little hastily or something. And then what happened? He got everything that he had back. I mean, he became more wealthy. So now that book is very explicit, telling you, drop your righteousness. Now, I didn't write the book. It's telling you, drop your righteousness, and you get anything you want. Now, a person can be evil and not bother anybody, and ain't nobody going to bother them either. <coughs> If they're evil or nothing. Nobody, I mean, or something, nobody's going to run out and attack rattlesnakes like that. I mean, a rattlesnake don't have to be doing anything to anybody. 
and they still see one and they get out the way. A skunk don't have to be doing nothing to anybody either. And they see one and they get out the way. Now it's amazing where people respect everything in nature but a black man. That's because whatever he got that is natural defense, he's not using it. Now, every black man needs to start finding out what is his natural defense. I'm sure the creator wouldn't give a skunk a natural defense and wouldn't give a black man one. He wouldn't do nothing like that. Now, you got a natural defense where you can defend yourself against any enemy. If you use it, all you have to do is not to harm it. Defend yourself by just saying no. And you put it there. Indians used to have it in America. They'd draw a line and couldn't nobody come across it. And Indians had a lot of power. But when they deserted their natural defenses, uh, then the white man took the whole thing. It's only because they deserted their natural defenses. Now here you, they weren't worshiping the wrong thing. Here you had an Indian went out in Florida this week. And uh, he did a rain dance. And you know, Florida having uh, a drought there. This Indian did a rain dance and it rained. Now, uh, the Weather Bureau doesn't really want to recognize that, but it rained. Furthermore, some more places he went to and did his rain dance, it rained. So then I look like folks that get so intellectual and everything and bypass nature, they're getting left out. But I told you when I first came in this class, that if you got in tune with nature, you could get what you want. If a man is pure enough and hard, he get out there and a the whole country is suffering and ask for help, he'll get it. But if one get out there who's not sincere and pray a prayer, of course he's not going to get anything because he don't mean nothing. He might be doing it for fame or doing it for money. But if a man really sincere, loved people and wanted to help them, got out there and asked for anything, he'd get it. Of course, finding somebody who really cares about folks is very difficult because everybody wants some money. Or the ones who don't want some money, they're trying to get to help them when they die. And they got all kinds of different names for their own self or self. But they, they're going to have to respect the fact that they must start thinking about not independence, but interdependence. Depend, let me see, interdependence. I have to uh, spell phonetically. That's a long word. Interdependence. 